Judgment of the Matter in BTI 2014 LLC against Saquon SA and others. Lord Briggs will hand down this judgment. This appeal deals with an important aspect of the duties of company directors, which was arguably left unresolved by Parliament when it undertook a wide-ranging restatement of company law in the Companies Act 2006. Section 1721 of that Act provides that a director of a company must act in the way which he considers, in good faith, would be most likely to promote the success of the company for the benefit of its members, i.e. its shareholders, as a whole. But section 1723 states that the duty imposed by section 172 has effect subject to any enactment or rule of law requiring directors in certain circumstances to consider or act in the interests of creditors of the company. This appeal raises squarely the question whether there is any such rule of law giving rise to a duty to consider or act in accordance with the interests of creditors, and, if so, its specific content and the time when it arises during the descent of a company's fortunes down the slope towards insolvency and possible liquidation. The facts are quite simple. In May 2009, the directors of a company called AWA caused it to distribute a dividend of 135 million euros to its only shareholder, Sequana SA. At that time, AWA was solvent, both because its assets exceeded its liabilities and because it could pay its debts as they fell due. But it had long-term pollution-related contingent liabilities of a very uncertain amount, which, together with an uncertainty as to the value of one class of its assets, an insurance portfolio, gave rise to a real risk, although not a probability, that AWA might become insolvent at an uncertain but not imminent date in the future. In the event that risk came to pass, and AWA went into insolvent liquidation in October 2018, almost 10 years after the dividend had been paid. AWA assigned its claims to the appellant BTI 2014 LLC and BTI sued the directors on the ground that they had failed in their duty to AWA to have regard to the interests of its creditors when deciding whether to authorise the payment of the dividend. The directors did not indeed pay any regard to the interests of AWA's creditors, but BTI lost its claim against the directors both before the judge, Mrs Justice Rose as she then was, and before the Court of Appeal, because both courts took the view that a duty to have regard to the interest of a company's creditors did not arise at a time when the company was solvent and the risk of insolvency in the future, although real, fell short of being imminent or probable. For convenience, I will call that duty the creditor duty although it has rightly been common ground in these proceedings that, if it exists at all, it is part of the duties which a director owes to the company, not a separate duty owed directly to creditors. In this court, BTI persisted in its case that a real risk of insolvency, as there was in 2009, was sufficient to trigger the creditor duty. For their part, the respondent directors did not merely persist in their case that the duty had not been triggered at the relevant time, but advanced the more fundamental submission that there was in truth no such creditor duty at all. They submitted that the decision of the Court of Appeal, which appeared first to have recognised it, West Mercia and Dodd, in 1988, was wrongly decided, so that both it and all the cases which have since followed it should be overruled. They also submitted that a dividend declared and paid in accordance with the statutory and common law rules regulating dividends, as this one was, could not in any event be challenged on the basis of breach of the creditor duty, even if it had then by then been triggered. After long and careful consideration, this court unanimously dismisses BTI's appeal. I give the lead judgment with which Lord Kitchen agrees. Lord Hodge gives a concurring judgment, agreeing with mine and adding further reasons. 
Lord Reed and Lady Arden give judgments agreeing with the outcome for broadly similar reasons as the majority, but with some differences. The conclusions of the majority are in summary as follows. One, a duty to have regard to, and in some circumstances to act in accordance with, the interests of a company's creditors is firmly established in English common law, even though of comparatively recent origin. It originated in the jurisprudence of Australia and New Zealand and was introduced into English common law by the West Mercia case, which has since been widely followed. Two, in particular, the creditor duty was firmly established by the time of the passing of the Companies Act 2006, so that the reference in section 172, subsection 3, to a relevant rule of law in that respect had the effect of confirming it. Three, there is a good principle justification for the creditor duty, founded on the economic reality that, as a company moves towards insolvent liquidation, the interests of creditors assume an ever-increasing importance among the company's stakeholders until they predominate in liquidation itself, or now in a distributing administration. At the same time, the importance of the interests of the company's shareholders reduces eventually to zero. Four, but it is much too early to treat the creditor duty as engaged merely because a company faces a real risk of insolvency. That is a common feature among companies, which is insufficient to require directors to consider creditors' interests. Their duty continues to be to do that which, in their view, best promotes the success of the company in the interests of its members. Five, the duty to consider creditors' interests arises when the directors know, or ought to know, that the company is insolvent or is bordering on insolvency, or that an insolvent liquidation or administration is probable. In slight disagreement with the Court of Appeal, it is not enough that insolvency itself, from which the company may well recover, is probable. Six, the content of the creditor duty, once it has arisen, is to give such consideration and weight to creditors' interests as, a, as is appropriate in the particular financial and business circumstances of the company at the time. Their interests have to be balanced against the interests of other stakeholders in the company, including those of its members. Seven, but once an insolvent liquidation or administration of the company has become inevitable, there being no light at the end of the tunnel, as it is often described, then the interests of the creditors become paramount. Finally, this court rejects, as indeed did the Court of Appeal, the submission that compliance with the statutory and common law rules about dividends insulates directors from liability to the company for breach of the creditor duty, nor can the supposed ratification of their decision by shareholders protect them. Since AWA was solvent when the dividend was paid, insolvency was not imminent, and insolvent liquidation or administration was not probable, the directors were not then under a duty to consider the interests of AWA's creditors. The appeal is therefore dismissed. The court will now adjourn.